Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about, I have passed my medical coding certification, now what? If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, today's episode was inspired by a viewer email. Um, so I'm going to read the email and then we're gonna get into it. So let us begin, all right. So they write, I recently received my CCA, Certified Coding Associate if you didn't know. Um, I have no coding experience, but I have dental and orthodontic records experience. I don't have a working car at the moment. Is it just crazy for me to think I could get something entry level while working from home? I ask you because I know you will tell me the truth. I don't even know what to look for. Thanks. So here's the thing, guys. When you are completing these medical coding programs and you're studying for your exam, it's a good idea to have a plan in place. Like, where are you gonna apply? What positions are you wanting to apply for? Now, I will go into a separate episode about uh, alternative job positions, again, <laughs> in another episode. But for now, I just wanna talk about what to expect and what you should do, okay? How to prepare yourself for when you have your certification and you're out there looking. So if you don't know what positions to look for or where to go, Indeed is a great place to start. Um, this person is a CCA. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna assume <laughs> that they have a uh, AHIMA membership. There's always the AHIMA job bank that is available um, to look through for jobs, okay? So if they have that, then obviously that's another great alternative to go. But LinkedIn, not LinkedIn, but um, uh, Indeed, I was gonna say Instagram. <laughs> uh, it, uh, Indeed is a great place to start looking for jobs as well because there's a lot of them there. Now, you can always start at the temp agency. Now, they did mention that they don't have a car. Here's the thing, guys. If you want to get into this field, you're not going to let the fact that you don't have a vehicle stop you. And you can't um, say, well, I can't make it to you know the job interview because I don't have a car. You need to find a way. If you were able to study through and get through this program, you can find a way to get around, whether it's calling an Uber if you need to, to go on these interviews or uh, to go and apply where you can go on the bus and, and do that. I mean, there's always that, there's public transportation. So you have to look at not the things that are stacked up against you, like your circumstances, like how am I gonna do that? You have to figure out a way. And that's what I will tell you guys. That's why I, what I will always encourage is that you try to find a way. You can't let this, stop you okay so um i have said many times in all of my videos brand new coders should work at a facility first however with the pandemic it changed things so a lot of brand new medical coders were able to start remotely because medical coding still needs coders so uh they were willing to take on brand new coders you know even even though they had no experience and let them work at home because before you had to have uh, three to five years experience period if you didn't have that you were not working at home now if this person is lucky enough to find a job at home it is a lot of responsibility on your shoulders right off the bat okay so that is something you got to keep in mind if you get stuck which inevitably you will <laughs> because all coders get stuck when they're brand new because you're used to working with a book when you are in the real world, you're going to be working with providers who have moods some days that they don't want to write, they don't want to document, and they get lazy. They get lazy too, or they're getting a rush or in a hurry, and they don't necessarily document everything they, they're supposed to, and you have to query, and you have to wonder, you know, is there enough here to pick something up, you know? And so that's where I say it's very helpful to have new coders working in the facility again i mean it's just it's just my advice i'm trying to set you guys up for success so you know i mean that's just just what i have to say about it but if you're still insisting on working from home just know that it's going to be a lot and um you don't want to look for entry level when you are brand new and you have your certification they're always going to ask for experience always because employers number one are lazy and they don't want to have to train but even people who have experience for years and years can also not know right 
Uh, and they can also be like, well, I only worked in this certain specialty and I'm used to that and I'm not used to all of this other stuff. There are coders out there like that who have the time in but only did one thing. Some did only risk adjustment, which um, you never want to get stuck with risk adjustment because risk adjustment is only diagnosis coding. And I have seen uh, job ads that say if your only experience has been with risk adjustment, this does not count as experience. There are some that say that. Not all of them, but there are some. So don't panic if you're hearing me say this. But... Um, you know, missing out on the uh, diagno the procedure coding and the ENM coding will hurt you. Okay, so I mean, even if you're out there and you're applying, and they say candidate must have three to five years experience, or candidate must have this credential, that credential, go ahead and apply anyway. Okay, so uh, the worst that they can do is tell you no. That is the worst thing that they can do, or they can ignore you, which you will run into that a lot. There's a lot of employers that don't know how to tell people, I'm sorry, uh, uh, please apply again, or um, we're sorry, you know, your qualifications do not meet uh, our needs. And that's the other thing, which is another point in this video. To prepare yourself for looking for a job, you have to have a good resume. I'm going to keep harping on the resumes. I see resumes because I do resume reviews all the time, resume rewrites actually. And I see a lot of resumes come to me where they say, well, Blue, I'm brand new and I don't have any experience as a medical coder. And I look at their resume and there is nothing about their training. There is nothing about knowing ICD-10-CM, knowing CPT-4, knowing Hicks-Picks Level 2. There's nothing about that. There's that they went to the school and they got a certification, but that's it. So when you're applying and you're sitting in your resume, your resume is going through a software program a lot of times and it's scanning for words that are relevant to that position. And if you look at the job listings, it's literally telling you what they're looking for. Now, yes, while you may not have all the experience, you do have training. And that's where your strengths come into play. You have training. And it doesn't matter if you didn't come from a, a background of medical. I came from no background of medical. So that's where it was like, okay, uh, I, this is what I know. This is what I was taught. And when I did catch the attention of some employers, they gave me a test. They were like, wow, you did really good. But we have this rule at our facility about hiring people with only experience and that kind of thing. To me, that's just a bunch of crap. But, you know, <laughs> who am I? <laughs> uh, but anyway, but they did tell me, hey, apply again. So that's why I learned to start applying again. Uh, but having a good resume, arming yourself with a good resume uh, before you go out there and you know, you start applying in all these places, it, it's going to go a long way. And guys, do not make your resume more than two pages. Two pages is the max. When I look on um, LinkedIn, and I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, Medical Coding with Blue, so if you're interested, you can connect with me there as well. I see a lot of people that they're brand new, and then they have these four or five page resumes. And I'm like, what are you doing? This is, it, it, there's just so much unnecessary information on there. There's a lot of repeating. There's a lot of really long sentences. Like employers are not going to want to waste their time looking at those things. You know, two, two pages is okay. I, I rewrite resumes all the time. People get uh, callbacks all the time with my two page resumes. It's no big deal. Uh, but when you go three or four pages, five pages, that, that's ridiculous, guys, and it's unnecessary, okay? So getting into this field, you want to be able to highlight your skills. What were you trained in? That is your skill. I don't want to hear, well, Blue, I don't have any experience. You don't have to have experience. You have training, which is very important in this field. Uh, a lot of times, even veteran coders forget those basic rules about, you know, um, uh, privacy and, and all of these other things and the, and the coding rules, whereas somebody who's brand new is going to know those things, right? Because if you've been listening <laughs> to any of the videos that I've had where I say reading your coding guidelines is very important and you have to read them consistently, okay? So that is something that you can do to prepare yourself. And then you're going to go out there and you're going to start applying. You go on... Um, Indeed, you go on the Ahima Job Bank, you go anywhere where you can find jobs 
and you start applying and you apply for outpatient coding positions. You, you can apply for medical billing. You can apply for medical records. You can apply for any of these positions that are even relatable to medical coding. You can apply for a medical coder. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I will go into the different job positions on another video, but I just wanted to kind of address like how to prepare first. Okay. You have to have a good outfit to be able to go out and do an interview with. Now, before you say, well, Blue, I don't have any money, there are good organizations out there like Dress for Success. Now, I utilize Dress for Success. They were the ones who gave me my first outfit to go and um, interview for jobs, and I will always be grateful. <laughs> and there is uh, typically a an organization like Dress for Success uh, in every major city. If not, you can contact uh, just the local organizations or like a church or something like that where they can kind of point you in the right direction of, you know, hey, I just need an outfit just to go and apply for jobs because how you appear and how you dress is going to be very important. I've heard of people say, well, uh, I went in jeans and I had a nice blouse on. No, ma'am, no, sir. Don't ever show up to an interview in jeans because that says that you don't you're not really serious. You want to look serious. And even if you are uh, doing a virtual interview like at home and they see you on camera, make sure that your background is clean and clear from any kind of clutter and there's no barking dogs or, you know, kids screaming in the back. You need to show that you are serious, okay? And even if you have to go someplace that's going to be quiet for you, it's just for a few minutes so that you can show that you're going to be prepared to be in a serious role in medical coding. So there's a lot of things that go into getting out there and getting prepared for a job. You can also apply at the temp agencies. If you Google in your area, uh, temporary agencies for medical professions, you will see a lot of them pop up and they will be specific towards medical professions. They'll hire medical coders temporarily, medical billers, and that kind of thing. So you'll see those, those um, companies pop up. You can apply with them. And you don't have to have experience to work for a temp agency because a temp agency is temporary, right? And the more assignments you get sent on and, and you tell them, hey, I'm a new graduate of medical coding. Uh, I would like a, a medical coding position if you have any available, if you have anything available in medical records or anything like that, that would be great as well. Stay away from scheduling. Don't do scheduling because it's a dead end. Um, people will argue and say, oh, no, that's where I started. Okay, but majority of people don't start. Uh, in medical coding coming from uh, scheduling, okay? Scheduling is telephone work and you're not seeing like um, codes and procedures and that kind of thing. So you want to make good use of your time. If you can't get your first job as a medical coder, that if you're getting into like medical records or you're getting into medical billing, this is exposing you to the arena of codes, right? Especially with billing. Uh, even if you do prior authorizations, okay? So I know I'm giving away my whole episode, <laughs> uh, but that is just something that you can consider because if you're exposed to medical codes, that's gonna go on your resume. And again, all of the assignments that, that the temp agency sends you on, no matter how long or how short, can go right on your resume as experience. And so that's when you can start gaining some traction, okay? And that's just something that you can think about when you're out there. Um, but you have to really kind of, you know, get mind focused on this and decide that this is what you want to do. Uh, cause a lot of people, the second they run into any kind of resistance from employers, they're like, Oh, I want to give up and I wasted all this money and I did this and, and now I'm in debt because I spent all this money and, and, uh, I, I you know, I just, I, I'm not getting a job because it's not going to be handed to you guys. It, it's just not. And so if you are looking for something, uh, you need to be out there really actively looking and you have to make sure that you're looking at your resume, making sure that you have your best foot forward with how you appear and how you're dressing. Um, and like I said, having not, not having an outfit is not an excuse either because there are organizations that are out there to help you. Okay, so if you've gone through the WIOA program, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, um, that's typically through the workforce office, your local workforce office, and they can put you in contact with people who can help you get an outfit for your first interview. So 
you know that there's always those things and sometimes it's it's not a pride thing i had this problem too because when i was going out for my first interviews um my case manager was like do you have an outfit for interview and i was like well not really you know uh because remember i'm on the heels of a divorce and you know i'm just going through all this stuff and and um he's like okay well we can send you to dress for success and I was like, what's that? <laughs> you know, and so he's like, oh, it's an organization where they give you an outfit and they give you makeup and things like that. So you can um, go out there and, and find a job and be presentable. And so I said, OK, he said, don't don't feel like, you know, it's 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 don't feel that pride that you don't want to ask for help, because right now is the time, um, because one day you're going to get out of this situation where you know you don't have anything and then you're going to get to a position where you are going to be established and then you can help somebody else he goes you can always pay it forward later <laughs> and so i will always remember that I, I i i miss mr enrique he was the one who was my um my uh, case manager and and it, it was because of him that i got into medical coding because i didn't know what medical coding was i was like <laughs> What's this? And I, was, uh, I heard medical. Oh, I don't, I don't deal with needles because I knew everything, right? <laughs> uh, but changed my life. It did. And and now I'm sharing this information with you all. Okay, don't be prideful. Okay, don't do it like I did. Okay, be, don't be prideful. Uh, ask for help as far as like with these organizations goes. Um, if you're asking me basic questions, I'm I'm either not going to respond because I probably already did a video about it, and that's me encouraging you to do your fishing <laughs> fish people fish <laughs> what is it the saying it goes uh if you give a man a fish you feed him for a day if you teach a man to fish you feed him for a lifetime my videos are y'all teaching y'all to fish because there is a topic about everything okay and so i haven't talked about what to do in a while like after you've completed your certification so that's why I went ahead and did it again. <laughs> uh, but a lot of these questions can be easily answered by going through my videos. Okay, guys? So learn to do your fishing. Okay? Uh, but that is what I have to say about this. Um, now, again, if you can apply for remote positions and they hire, great. Uh, because like I said, the pandemic changed it all. You know, the pandemic is like, okay, well, you know, we're not going to have that reality of having to be in person all the time. Uh, so we're going to have to bring these new coders in, but they got to show their worth and you have to be proactive. You have to know how to do your research because if you're going to sit there and ask the people question after question after question, they're going to wonder if you are actually like wanting to learn or if you're just wanting somebody to give you the answer. Because if that's the case, a lot of coders, especially veterans, um, there's, and some veteran coders are helpful. Okay. Hello. <laughs> uh, but some will not train you. They will be like, okay, no one trained me. So I'm not going to train you, which I don't think is right, but there's, I mean, I, I can't control everybody's response, you know? Uh, but there are a lot of medical coders out there that are like that. They're like sink or swim, you know? And you know, if you sink or swim, that's, that's no difference to them. Uh, unfortunately they are, they can be that way. Uh, so be prepared, learn how to do your research. Uh, there's always Google. There's always Google. There's always the association websites. If you belong to AHIMA or AAPC, you know, they often have the discussion boards available uh, if you have questions and, and you can reach out for mentors there as well, too. So that is another bit of advice that I have there. Um, it, it is it is possible to get a remote coding job. However, I'm telling you guys now it is not easy. It's better if you're in person um, because at least this way, you know, I mean, but if, if that's the way the facility has it, that's the way they have it. Um, even at my facility, we're doing a hybrid schedule. I am at the facility 100% of the time because my internet doesn't, I'm not good with internet here in the house. <laughs> uh, so I am always at the facility. And, um, but there's a lot of the, my coworkers that are, you know, uh, some are there a week and then they go home for three weeks and then they're back for a week. And so a lot of facilities I notice are doing that as well. Some of them have the coders come in once a week uh, to kind of touch base with the uh, providers and, and that's how they're able to keep that communication going. So, I mean, it really all depends on where you're applying, but apply everywhere, apply at hospitals, apply 
at uh, urgent care centers, you know, there's a, those are always a good place to start as well. Uh, urgent care centers, you're going to see everything, <laughs> uh, colds, minor injuries, you know, it's really good to be up on your injury coding as well. Uh, because when you know those things, trust me, that starts opening lots of doors for you. But if you are resisting, and this is one thing I'm going to say before I wrap it up, uh, if you are resisting learning things like, or studying, continuing to study, right? Uh, like evaluation and management and the procedures and things like that, you're only hurting yourself, guys. Uh, you got to face that head on because if you don't, you're always going to run from it and you're never going to have the full potential of opportunity uh, that you could have had, had you just continued to study. Don't stop studying. I, I got an email the other day from somebody, I haven't studied in four years. A uh, quick, what do I have to study? Are you kidding me? No, I, I am not. I did not respond. I didn't. Simply because, are you kidding me? You want to be a coder after four years and you stop studying and now you want a crash course because you have an interview on Monday, which is like four days away? No, ma'am. No, sir. No. If you have not been studying, that's on you. You guys need to continue to study. Even if you're not getting a call back, even if you're not getting a job, because in the second the time that that it happens and you get that call back, you need to be prepared. It's people that want things to be handed to them that are just going to be like, oh, well, what do I have to do? A crash course. No, no, no. No, ma'am, no, sir. I will never, never, ever, ever encourage crash course in anything. And as far as like, oh, what do I have to learn real quick? Everybody is going to uh, test different things. Um, Different facilities have different needs. So it really all depends on where you're applying. I have no idea where this person was applying. Okay. So that's another thing too. I mean, what am I supposed to do? What, how am I supposed to prepare you? I mean, really? And you haven't been doing your homework for four years? Again, no ma'am, no sir. No ma'am, no sir. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Guys, you can do it. You can find a job. It is possible, but prepare yourself. Make sure that you are ready and speak confidently because you have been trained and you do know what you're doing because a lot of times we're not giving ourselves enough credit um, based on the things that we know. So that is just something to think about. All right. If this video was helpful for you, I hope you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, like this, subscribe if you haven't already, share it, and I will see y'all on the next episode. Bye.